Hey everybody, it's me, and today we're going to take a look at how to do autocomplete addresses in Glide using an API called GeoAppify. Uh, GeoAppify is free to use. They give you 3,000 credits a day. A credit is basically anytime you run the API or make a call via the API. Um, I've been playing with this all evening. I think I've hit like 100 credits so far. So uh, really good for pet projects. If you're looking to do anything more than a pet project, you'll want to definitely pay uh, to get enough credits to last for your users if they're making calls all day long, right? So depending on how big your, your project is, but uh, free is good. And then within GeoAppify, you create an account, uh, you create a project. They have different types of projects here. So I can add a new project um, and the different types of projects that they have are like geolocation, reverse address lookup, and so forth, right? So you can choose what kind of API you want. And I'm doing the autocomplete API. And you see it gives you an API key and all that too, which I'm gonna scrap here. So um, so I've already done that here with this Glide geolocation. Um, and then within this, it actually gives you the URL to use, right? So uh, if I choose the autocomplete API, you see it's a, it's a get request here. Uh, and it gives you um, that you're using the autocomplete and some of the parameters in here. And within this, uh, I'm searching for the C URL. It's just the easiest to read. And I'm gonna take this URL and throw it into a Glide uh, construct URL column, all right? So the construct URL column, um, as you'll be able to see here, has like the, uh, the URL that you're calling, the type of project, in this case it's autocomplete, the API key, and the search term. That's all within different parameters of the URL. All right, and that's gonna result in a URL here, and then I'm throwing this URL into a fetch JSON uh, plugin column. And the results uh, is actually, actually give you quite a bit of results. So if I were to do nothing here and just look at the, the raw JSON, you see it's got a, oh, oh right, my search is empty, hold on. Let's go, my search was something. Okay, so you see it's got a, a lot of different results. Um, and so I'm just looking at this results array. And then within this array, you see that gives you different results. And the first thing that starts you off with is like maybe the country code, then the house number, then the street address, the country, the county, and all other fun things, right? But actually located within all of this is this formatted param or this formatted data point, right? Which actually has the full address, right? Here's the street address, the city, the state, the zip, and even the country. So all I have to do is look at this formatted value. So it's gonna be results and then formatted. So in order to type that out in JQ query, we do dot results, Oops, spell results, right? Um, results is an array. And then I do dot formatted. Like so, all right, so this is now um, an array, basically a JSON array of fetched addresses. And then in order to strip out all the punctuation, what I did was I took this fetch JSON, threw it into a template column, and I just started stripping things out. So the first thing is I stripped out the first and the last brackets to be nothing. Then in between each result, they have an end quote, a comma, and then the starting quote of the next address. And I'm replacing all of that with a separator, in this case, a pipe because I didn't want to use a comma because commas are located throughout the address. So I used a pipe character. And then the last thing is to strip out the beginning and the ending uh, quotes. So then I did quote to be nothing. And the end result looks like this, right? So we have an address followed by a pipe and then the next address, All right? So now I can use this pipe as the delineator in a split text. So this is like, split results and the result is now this array of uh, addresses 
Now, in order to actually read this in Glide, we have to take this array and transpose it because um, we want to view this either as a choice component or an inline list, let's say. So um, I have a new sheet here called API results. And in this API results, I'm doing a cool little trick that I saw on the Glide forum, which basically dynamically generates a row ID, or a row number here, so zero through nine in this case. I definitely want zero starting off because we're dealing with arrays, and zero is always the first um, location of that array. And then this is a single value column bringing in the results. So results from users. Right, uh, because I, this is a one user app, I didn't do anything tricky with this. But otherwise, what I would need to do is a um, a template column that looks at the currently signed in users email, a relation to that user, right, and then the single value should really be. Um, if I were to do a multiple relation, I'm, you know, then getting a single value from through this relation to grab this information, really, or maybe even a template column. So even maybe better than a single a single value column here would actually be a template column. So I would do a template column and then look at the user profiles fetched formatted, and then split it within this sheet. That could probably be better. Um, and save you save some columns here and definitely make it user specific. But uh, in terms of this tutorial, I only have a one user app here. So, all right. So anyway, so we have this results from the user sheet, and again, it's just the same exact um, value as what's in the split results. And then in order to parse this out onto each individual row, like you see here, I have a single value column, which is getting the from the start the row is going to be the index and the value is the results from users so it's taking a look at this array and it's going to grab the nth value in that array and you see that it parses out each address onto its own row so this is a method i like to call the miracle method i have a youtube video on it as well as in the forum i'll make sure i link it in the post below all right, so now that we have these addresses on their own row, now we can display them in the app, right? So it's just a matter of creating an inline list of those API results. Um, the title is addresses. I was trying to play around with images to see if I could do the image, like a map, but um, it doesn't let you do that in a list view for whatever reason. It will let you do it in a card view or a tile view. So if I do tile images addresses where the image is a map, uh, we can actually get the locations right there in the map too. Um, but it kind of loses the aesthetic of like autocomplete, right? So I was just leaving it as a list, like so. All right, so then the last thing is what do you do with this, right? So I imagine usually with autocomplete, you tapping on a result completes your search. So that means I need a way that when I press this, it fills in my search and then kind of hides my results. So what I ended up doing was creating a, another column here called selection. So the selection is what will ultimately um, replace whatever I have within the results here. So if I tap on like this first result, uh, I want this result to be my selection. And so what I did was I created a custom action on this inline list. And it's just a simple set value. And in this set value, um, I'm just uh, the, uh, I mean, I'm taking the address that was from that result, and I'm throwing it both into what I was searching for, as well as my selection. Now the reason why I'm putting it in both places is as follows. And I go, sorry, in the set column is through the relation to user, right? Because um, I can't do this item because otherwise I'm staying within my API results sheet. Um, I need to spit this back to my user sheet, which is why I have that template column and then the rel to user, which I'll show you in just a second again. 
Uh, but the reason why I have in both places is as follows. Uh, before I get that, just so you see it again, in my API results sheet, I have a, a template column, which is looking at the user profile's email, and then a relation to user where I'm relating that template column back to the user's email. So then that way I can have the results here talk back to my row in the user sheet. Okay, so the reason why I have both is because I want some kind of smoke and mirrors visibility conditions to happen when I've pressed something, right? So right now my search is incomplete. And the moment I select something, I want this value to show up here. And then I want this inline list to disappear. So I need for there to be a way to, for the app to know when my search is complete. So I have it set where my search, what I'm typing in, which is dynamic, to be a fixed value, in this case, a selection. So when I press results, like this first result here, okay, now the search, what I'm typing, matches what I pressed the selection. And because these two things match exactly through that set column on the custom action, I can now have some visibility conditions set, right? So this inline list of the API results only shows up when uh, addresses is not empty and when the um, selection is not the same thing as search because when I push that button, they are the same thing, and I don't need to see my results anymore, so it hides itself. And then I have the reverse visibility condition true on this map. The map shows when what I've selected is what I've searched for here, right? So if I even delete one letter here, right, we see that I'm back to the results, and if I select the results, now they match again, and the map appears. So it kind of gives you the sense of like an autocomplete, right? Unfortunately, in Glide, we don't have this combination of a text entry and a choice component in one component here. Uh, so you have to combine the two with a text entry and an inline list and kind of just make some magic happen between the two things. Um, so yeah, so this works really well. So now if I wanted to, I could search for uh, my place of employment, like 1662 rugby and yep so it found not only the street address it also found it found the uh, actual name of the place too so if I want to even be even more specific I can select the second result and yep that's the correct location on the map um, and this should work universally so if I were to even look for a name of a place like the Eiffel Tower we should see an address appear for the Eiffel Tower. And there it is. Okay, so in Paris, Tennessee. <laughs> um, or Eiffel Tower 5 at 5th Avenue, Antinoli, France. Yeah, this is the correct one in Paris, France. Right, and then there's the address right there. So yeah, so this is the way you can have autocomplete addresses in Glide. I guess the next step here is that once they found the actual address, you'd want them to do something with it. Um, all this functionality obviously exists in a custom form. This wouldn't work in an actual form. Um, so you have to build a custom form on a details screen kind of experience, which means you would also need to throw in a button in here somewhere, right? That says, um, you know, with whatever, whatever, uh, fields in addition to the address that you're looking for here and if you can like save this location um, this button would only appear again when the conditions are met where search is equal to is the selection and then this button can be you know like an add row something like that maybe it's an add row and a clear right so it adds it and clears it so that for your next search and so you can have like save locations, um, just, to, just so you see that real fast, you can do something like uh, saved locations, where we have the address, and maybe the name of the user, um, and then the time at which it was 
completed maybe. And then that timestamp. Okay, so then like on this button, we have a custom action. So create a new action where we do an add row to the save locations. Address would be whatever I selected. The selection here, or maybe the search. Either one, it's gonna be the same thing. Uh, emails, email, timestamp, current date and time. And then we could have it also clear. So we can do a notification find and then um, a set, set column values where we can clear both the search and the selection to prepare us for a new search. Right? This is like save location and clear. Save. All right, so that would look like this. Oh, before I do that, let's actually create an inline list of our save locations. Let's right. um, do a row owners on there. All right, so when I save this, it should save the name of the place. There we go. And then if we want to, we can make this tiles, right, where uh, image is the address. Yeah, that's fun. And so let's search for a new place. Oops, yeah, I thought save. Oh, save also needs to be where. Okay. Um, because we're now blank is blank. It's matching it. So also where add, uh, uh, search is not empty. All right. So then search. We can search for Wrigley Field. That's the one. Save. Um, how about one more place? I think it's 47th Street, yeah. So. Right. so, yeah, I mean, the map's a little slow to clear, but you get the idea. So, autocomplete in Glide. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below.